Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. And this is now question number eight from the International A level um, at Excel, Pure Mathematics P3, June stroke October 2020 paper. Um, this is a question, part one, about the curve with equation y equals g of x, where g of x equals e to the power of 3x times secant 2x, and x is between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4. We've got to find g dash of x means we've got to differentiate this function. So we've got to find the differential of g of x. Now g of x is equal to e to the power of 3 of x, 3x times secant of 2x. Okay, now to differentiate something like this, we have a product of two completely separate functions. So we have to use what's called the product rule. When we use a product rule, one of the functions, or one of the parts of the function, one of the products, we call u, and the other one we call v. It doesn't matter which is which. So I'm going to call u three to the, e to the power of 3x. I'm going to call v secant 2x. Now I like to set it up like this, u on the left, v on the right. Underneath u, I'm going to write the differential of u with respect to x, which I'll call u dash. That's going to be, now, e to the power of something doesn't change at all when you differentiate it. However, when there's a function inside the function, you have to multiply it by the differential of what's inside the function. So this, is, this stays as e to the power of 3x. However, if you differentiate 3x, you get 3. So you must multiply by that 3. That's from the chain rule. So u dash equals 3 e to the power of 3x. And for v, when you differentiate secant of something, you're going to end up with um, the differential of secant x is going to give you um, secant x is going to give you sec x tan x. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is something that you find in your formula book. And I'm just going to bring it up to just to show you. So as we can see here, this is a uh, formula. This is from the formula book that you get in your exam. And we can see that the, the, the function secant of x, when you differentiate, you get sec x tan x, as I mentioned. Okay, so it's not one of the things that maybe you don't need to memorize, but it's useful for you to, to memorize it so you can recognize it, especially when we're doing integration and stuff like that. It's very useful for you to recognize the differentials and integrals of these functions quite easily. But the differential of secant x is sec x tan x. Now, <clears throat> so if you have secant 2x, we've got the function inside the function, which we'll have to multiply by the differential of. So you end up with 2 times secant 2x times tan 2x. That's how you differentiate v. v dash is going to be secant 2 secant 2x tan 2x if v is equal to tan x, uh, sec 2x. Sorry. Now, using the, the product rule, I like to multiply this with this and add to that the, the sum of these two multiplied. Now, you'll notice in the formula books, they normally give it to you, or in the books, whatever you do there, have give you the formula for this, but the formula books, they normally do it the other way around. They normally do this times this plus that times that. It doesn't make any difference really which way you do it. But I like to do it in this way because I like to do this first and then this second. Because for the quotient rule, you have to do it this way because you're going to have this times this minus that times that divided by v squared. So if you stick to this one way of doing it, you won't get confused between the quotient and the product rule. This is the, the way you do it. Um, both in, in in the quotient rule, you have to do this this times this minus that times that, because um, a minus makes a difference. Like two minus three is not the same as three minus two. So for the product rule, it doesn't matter which way you do it really, because you're adding them. So two plus three and three plus two is the same. So it doesn't make any difference um, in terms of which order you do it. But if you get used to doing this order, I prefer that so that you don't get confused with the quotient rule. Okay, so now you've got secant two x times e to the power of um, 3 e to the power of 3x that gives you 3 e to the power of 3x times a secant of 2x plus and then you multiply these two together that's going to give you 2 e to the power of 3x times secant 2x tan 2x and that is g dash of x and there's the answer to part A. They didn't ask you to factorize it or anything like that. They just said find g dash of x, which is the differential of gx. So that's the answer to part A. I'm sure we're going to have to use this answer. Okay, so I'll copy it. 
part B says, or part two, was that just, was that it? One, part A, okay. And we got part two. I think there's another part to this question. Yes, hence find the x coordinate of the stationary point of C. So there's a part B. I didn't see part B. Let me bring this up here. I'll bring the question up here. Do you have more space? It says, hence find the x coordinate of the stationary point of C. So we've got to find these, the x coordinate of the stationary point of C. So let's do that now. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to. M take this equation that we found earlier and equate it to zero because on the stationary point okay at the stationary points it says there's only one here so at the stationary point what we can say is g dash of x has to equal zero and remember, we're looking for solutions between minus pi over four and pi over four Okay, so let's equate this to zero. So you have three e to the power of three x times secant of two x plus two e to the power of three x times secant two x tan two x equals zero. So if we take out the common factors here, which are e to the power of three x times secant two x, and you multiply that's multiplied by three plus 2 tan 2x equals 0. So we have here <coughs> e to the power of 3x times secant 2x equals 0. And you have here 3 plus 2 tan 2x equals 0. Okay, this gives us e to the power of 3x equals 0 and secant 2x equals 0. Uh, here we have no solution. This this is when the secant of 2x equals uh, 0, that doesn't actually ever occur. Okay, there's no solution to this either. Because this is when um, secant of 2x equals 0. That is, yeah, that doesn't have ever have secant of 2x. The secant of any angle will always be between um, minus 1, above my 1 and below minus 1. So there's no solution to either of these. This is what will give us a solution. So you have tan 2x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Okay, now our x, we've got to change that to 2x. So we've got to multiply by 2. So we've got to find the, the solutions between pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So we're going to say 2x equals inverse tan of minus 3 over 2. And we have to be in radians because we're differentiating. Whenever you use calculus and um, trig functions, you must always deal with radians. And this is in radian mode. So that's fine. So inverse tan of negative 3 over 2. And that gives us um, minus 9.8279. Minus zero point nine. What was it? Minus nine point nine eight two seven nine two seven nine. Now that solution is not accepted because it's out of. Or well actually, let's have a look. It might be in a range. Let's have a look. What's pi over four? I'm gonna have pi divided by four, which gives us zero point seven nine. It's out of our range. Okay, so we have to go from minus. Oh, we got to go to pi over 2, sorry, what am I talking about? Pi over 2, which is, um, yeah, so that's in our range. So you've got minus 1.57, minus 1.57, up to 1.57. Those are our ranges, so that's okay. Now what we got to do to the answer that we had before, okay, which is this answer here, we've got to divide it, we've got to add pi to it to see if there's other solutions. Okay, now here it says there's, there's one. So let, if we add pi to this, let's see what happens. Plus pi, I think it's going to go outside of the range. You're going to have 3 over 2 pi, which is outside of the range. That's weird. How did that become that? 
we got um, let's go back to this value okay so we take that and we add actually okay add pi oh, that's about 2.15 of, again it's outside of our range so that's fine so that that's our only solution okay which was which was um, yeah minus zero point yeah that's our solution so what we've got to do is got to divide it by two so we take that and we divide it by two so divided by two equals no that's not the right one I have to press equals first so that answer divided by two that gives us minus 0 0.491 minus 0 0.4913 okay 39 dot 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 okay and there is the answer okay so that's x coordinate 0 0.19 they didn't mention how to write it so I'll write it to 3SF 491 that's the x coordinate of the stationary point of this curve. Okay, so that's the answer to 3SF. They didn't mention how to write the answer, as I said, so you should always round to three significant figures unless otherwise stated. Okay, now next question. Um, a different curve has equation x equals lin of sine y and y is between 0 and pi over 2. Show that dy dx equals e to the power of x over f of x where f of x is a function of e to the power of x that should be found okay function of e to the power of x that should be found so we got to find dy dx so we have x equals the lin of sine y now to find dy dx will be very difficult to do it directly because to make y the subject of this is going to be you know really uh, difficult and it won't give us something which we can differentiate easily so what we can do is we can say let's find the x dy first and then write the reciprocal of that now when you differentiate the lin of something it becomes one over that same thing okay whatever's inside here but then you multiply by the differential of what's inside that function and the differential of sine y is mine is cosine y so you say dx dy is equal to cosine y over sine y so we can say therefore that dy dx is equal to sine y over cosine y the reciprocal so we can say dy dx is equal to you could say tan x if you were tan y sorry tan y okay but we have to express this in a form where we can um, you know write it in terms of e to the power of x so I've got to change this so I think writing it as tan won't help us here but if we we, we, we know that from the from the first statement here that x equals lin sine y so we can use that actually so x equals lin of sine y now if I try to uh, rewrite this in index form this is remember log to the base e so what, what this actually means is x equals log to the base e of sine y so if I rewrite this in index form remember e is the base x is the power so we can say e to the power of x equals sine y so I can replace the sine y with e to the power of x and then I've got to write cosine y in terms of e to the power of x it should be in terms of e to the power of x now I can link sine and cosine y together I know that sine, sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to 1. So if I want to write what cosine y is, let's just write that as this for now, cosine y. If I can write what cosine y is, cosine y or cosine squared y first is equal to 1 minus sine squared y. So that means cosine y is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared y. And I know that sine y is equal to e to the power of x. So I can rewrite this as dy dx equals e to the power of x over the square root of 1 minus e to the power of x squared. Okay, because that's sine y squared. And then I can rewrite that um, 
because you don't really write it like that in the end. You write it as 1 minus, remember you can multiply the powers, e to the power of 2x. Okay, and so f of x is a function of e to the power of x that should be found, and there we've done it. Okay, so that's the answer to that question, and we could say that this f of x is a part underneath, so we could say f of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus e to the power of 2x. Okay, so there's the answer to question number 8. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, other questions to do with differentiation from P3 can be found in this um, playlist over here. Other questions from this paper, which is the October, uh, June stroke October 2020 paper can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and you can find other P3 papers that might interest you on the top here on the cards. Thank you for watching and see you soon.